A reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 19. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing her mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed, and to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there, so putting a sponge soaked in the vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of a special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance. And immediately there came out blood and water. Today we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. This title, Mother of the Church, is nothing new to the Catholic faithful. Since the time of the Church Fathers, the Church has been teaching Mary is the mother of all the members of Christ. But this obligatory memorial is designated very recently in 2018. We celebrate this memorial on the Monday after Pentecost. I'd like to turn your attention to where she became our mother. Traditionally, the Church has quoted St. John's Gospel passage we just heard in today's Gospel. It was under the crucifix of Christ Jesus, the Tree of Life. In the meantime, the first reading today from the book of Genesis shows how the mother of all living, Eve, fell into the first sin. It was also under a tree where this first woman, Eve, the mother of all living, brought death to all living. Isn't that so intriguing? These two women were under trees, but under two different trees. One woman was under the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The other was under the tree of the crucifix. The former tree's fruit looked good for food and was a delight to the eyes. In contrast, the latter tree was deadwood and its fruit, Christ Jesus, was so painful to look at. But what those two trees brought to the human race were opposite to their appearances. The former tree brought death. The latter tree brought life. We know there was also a tree of life in the Garden of Eden. I wonder why Eve was not around the tree of life. We don't have any description of the tree of life 
in the book of Genesis. But I believe its fruit was not as attractive as the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I believe its fruit rather demanded discipline, obedience, sacrifice, and suffering. It was, I believe, the same tree under which the Blessed Virgin Mary was. The Blessed Virgin lost her only son on the tree of the crucifix. She offered the life of her son on the tree, and watching her son dying, she died too in her spirit. Imagine a mother watching her only child dying in crucifixion, the most shameful and painful death, being naked and suffocated under one's weight. However, under the tree of the crucifix, our Blessed Mother received new children, symbolized by John. She gained all the members of Christ as her children. How fruitful of the deadwood of the cross is. Mary took the most suffering fruit of the tree of the cross. She died with her son under the tree. However, she became more fertile than any other woman. She became the mother of all faithful, who are promised of eternal life, not like those children of Eve who had to die.